Hello again, wrestling fans. I'm Scott Casper. This is Takedown. We start the week's show in Cleveland, Ohio. It was the 51st edition of the NWCA All-Star Classic. Let's go to the opening bout. We started at 125. It was Campbell's Nathan Kreiser taking on Missouri's Barlow McGee. McGee hit a takedown just 10 seconds into the round, but Kreiser answered with escapes in the first and second period before holding McGee down for the entire third to get the riding time point and a 3-2 win. Next up, 133, it was Illinois Zane Richards meeting up with Big Ten rival Eric Montoya. Montoya scored first with a takedown, but Richards would counter with two takedowns of his own and held a 5-4 advantage at the end of one. So try to stay with me here. Montoya tied the score in a second period escape. Richards would escape to start the third. Montoya countered with the takedown, but Richard escaped again, and the score was tied at seven with just five seconds left. So we're heading to overtime, right? Wrong. Richards hit the winning shot at the buzzer and picked up an exciting 9-7 victory. Next, we go to 141. Returning NCAA runner-up Bryce Meredith opened up with a pair of first-period takedowns to go up 4-1 against the Scarlet Knight, Anthony Ashnell. Anthony did cut the deficit on a reversal and hit another takedown of the second, but Meredith tacked on two escapes of his own and held a one-point advantage after two. A third frame forced the bout into overtime. That's where Ashnell fought off a leg attack and then hit a takedown to win the match 9-7. Let's go to 149. It was the seventh career meeting between Oklahoma State's Anthony Kalika and Missouri's LeVon Mays. Mays opened up with takedowns in the first and second and held a 4-1 advantage, but Kalika came storming back with a takedown late in the second period and another midway through the third. It was 7-5, the final score in favor of the Cowboy Kalika. NC State's Max Roskopf was able to rally back and picked up the victory over Michigan's Brian Murphy at 157. Murphy ran out to a 6-2 lead. Roskopf earned a reversal and rode Murphy out in the second and then added an early escape in the third, cutting the deficit 6-4. Early in the third, Murphy shot on a leg attack, but the always tough NC State senior reversed and got the fall with just 17 seconds left in the third. Next, we go to 165, returning NCAA runner-up for Wisconsin, Isaac Jordan. Well, he returned home to Ohio and upended Missouri's Daniel Lewis. It was Lewis who scored the opening takedown of the bout and made it 3-0 on an early second-period escape. Jordan scored his first points late in the second and cut the deficit to 3-2. Down one with just a minute and a half remaining, Jordan hit another takedown and was able to ride out the remainder of the bout 5-3 for the victory. Next up, 174. Illinois' Zach Brunson hit a takedown and a two-pointer near fall to go up 4-0 against North Carolina's Ethan Ramos. Ramos would tie the score with two escapes and a second period takedown, but Brunson escaped to start the third and held on for a 5-4 win. Next, the main event. It was 184. Two-time NCAA champ Gabe Dean crushed Ohio State sophomore Miles Martin. Dean scored takedowns in each of the first two periods to go up 5-0 and tacked on three more takedowns on his way to an easy 13-4 victory. Now let's go to 197. It was a battle of Bretts. Returning All-Americans, Brett Farr of Minnesota and Brent Harner of Princeton traded takedowns in the first and second. The score tied at three. Still tied up after two, Farr earned a takedown and tacked on riding time point 7-4. The final in favor of Farr. Let's go to the heavyweights. It was a scoreless first period at 285. Connor Medbury of Wisconsin started the second with an escape and tacked on a pair of takedowns, defeating Virginia Tech's big man Ty Walls. The score, 5-2. All right, wrestling fans, stay tuned. The news continues. You're watching Takedown thanks to Casey's General Stores. Casey's famous for pizza. In this town, there's only one pizza joint that has your best interests in mind. They make every single pie from scratch. The freshest ingredients, 100% real mozzarella. Oh, and if your engine's running a quart low, well, they can take care of that too. Casey's, famous for pizza. Right now, get free breadsticks with the purchase of any large made from scratch pizza.
All right, welcome back to Takedown. Our coverage continues in Iowa City, Iowa. That's where the third-ranked Hawkeyes are preparing for one of the most difficult dual schedules in all of wrestling. Tom Brands and his squad met with the media just last week to talk about the schedule, the lineup, and winning one bout at a time. We do like our guys. That's my opening statement, and I'm ready to field questions. That's a word I use a lot, ownership, and what ownership means if you're going to define it and have a clear understanding of what ownership is. It's not about wearing the singlet as a member of the Iowa wrestling team or as a guy who broke the lineup. It's about ownership of the weight class where you're competing for the top spot every time, every time out. They want guys that are going to score points. They want guys that are going to be exciting. Uh, the fans want guys, wrestlers that are going to be exciting. Uh, so my job is to go out and, and put on a performance, whether it's in the practice room or out in Carver in front of all the fans, it's, it's no different. I have to go out and I have to perform. You know, wrestling's wrestling, but so anytime you get a chance to compete, it's good to just gauge where you are. And I mean, I thought I did a lot of good things and I found things that maybe, maybe you don't see them in the practice room because you're, you wrestle slightly different in practice in a match and then you say, okay, well, what do I need to get better at for, for a match situation, you know, just being in those different situations, preparing a little differently. But uh, yeah, I mean, overall, I think it's just good. It was a good gauge to see where I was at. We want multiple champions, and uh, obviously that'll put together a team title. And you know, we had three in the finals last year, all came in second. That's not where we want to be. That was no one's goal. Uh, there's no real such thing as off season other than the fact that we don't have any competitions um, as far as collegiate wrestling wise. Um, nothing really changed for me in between the NCAA tournament and now. Um, moving forward every day. Goal's always the same, you know, the goal's still to win an NCAA title. Um, you know, it was a bump in the road, but it doesn't change my plan, doesn't change, you know, uh, the goals I have set out for myself. It's been great. We're getting ready to go. Uh, room's kind of been heated, but in a really good way. You know, it's been competitive. Uh, people have been coming in, working hard every day, and it's been, it's been great. My goal since I've came here is to be a national champ, and now I'm down to the last string. So, I mean, it's time to get the job done. All right, from Iowa City, we go to University Park, Pennsylvania. The second-ranked Nittany Lions also met with the media for the first time this year. Like Iowa, PSU will have several new faces in their lineup this season, but with six national titles in seven years, something tells me the Lions don't rebuild, they reload. Just excited to compete and excited for the opportunity and um, just grateful uh, to be healthy and um, move forward and um, you know just attack, attack every day and uh, wrestle, wrestle my best abilities for, uh, for myself, for God, for uh, the team and uh, for the fans. So. What's kind of the transition been like for you since you got on campus? It's, it's been an adjustment. I mean, I came out here uh, over the summer. I think it was early August or late July or something like that, June, I don't know. I've been here for six weeks in the summer. I went right into the semester. Uh, I was training every day, doing morning lifts, you know, uh, training with the club guys, with the college guys, and uh, it was an adjustment. You know, I'm training with national champions, four-time state champs, you know, is a common thing in this room. So, uh, you know, I was, I came into this room not being the best guy, and that's that's what I want. That's that's what it, that's what it takes to be the best. You know, I'm training with guys like Zane Rutherford, NCAA champ, pound for pound, best guy in college wrestling. I trained with Nico Megaludis, sorry about that. 125 pound NCAA champ last year. I mean, I'm wrestling with guys that are all Americans every day, and it's just unbelievable. That's how I'm gonna get better. Just excited to wrestle with a little new team and stuff like that, and so it's gonna be a lot of fun, and just looking forward to starting it off strong. This summer, I did a lot of training in the weight room and, and lifting, trying to get a little bigger and stronger and stuff like that for the move up, and uh, just a lot of wrestling, and uh, uh, I'm probably gonna wrestle the same, but just I'm a little stronger, so that's about it. Freshman year, I definitely like, took some lumps, and uh, it's not always going to be the easiest thing, but just trusting the coaches, trust the process, and um, stay consistent with your attitude and, and your effort, for sure. I've been here now for about two and a half years, and maybe there hasn't been a s full year yet where I've been here and been healthy the whole time, except for this past, this past year, so it's been, uh, it's been really good. I've been in and out health-wise uh, on the team, and I'm fully back and ready to go, and I've been, I've been going at it now for a while, and I've really been enjoying myself and just really enjoying everything that's been going on. You're watching Takedown, powered by Yellow Blue Ecotech. We'll be right back.
Yellow Blue wants to show you. Global energy demands are expanding at an alarming rate. Power grids in the U.S. are aging while coal plants continue to close at record rates. Utility rates are at an all-time high and there's no end in sight. If this concerns you, call Yellow Blue, delivering products and services that are not only green, but cost effective. You can be independent, safe, and secure. We'll show you how at yellowbluetech.com. At Cookies, sauces and seasonings are business, but food is our passion. Our secret ingredient is Cookies Flavor Enhancer and All-Purpose Seasoning. It makes pretty much everything taste better. You can use it on meats and in marinades, veggies and seafood, Try it on pasta and even popcorn. Pick up a bottle at your local grocer and enhance the flavor of your favorite foods. Cookies For more ideas and recipes, visit cookiesbbq.com. Cookies is the one. USA Wrestling has hired longtime national team member Brent Metcalf as the new national freestyle developmental coach. Here's head coach Bill Zanuck on why the former Hodge Trophy winner is a perfect fit for his staff. You know, as a head coach, I think that uh, one of the most important things that you do is uh, you outline a culture and build a culture of your team and your program, and the staff is a huge piece of that. And so, um, you know, there's a ton of great people out there in the United States and, and going through that and, and thinking about um, who's out there and talking, you know, having some conversations with Brent. He's a guy that uh, I've respected for a long, long time. I actually competed against him and know he's a fierce competitor. We all know, um, you know, his, his, uh, his record as a competitor, two-time NCAA champion, uh, four world teams that he's been on, uh, Pan Am champion, World Cup champion. Um, and even going back into the age groups for the developmental job, this was something that was important uh, to me. And, you know, he was a record, record setter. He, I believe he has six uh, Fargo titles, three in Greco and three in freestyle. And so, um, you know, his, his performance speaks for itself. But on top of that, he's a great individual, a great person, a family man. He's honest, trustworthy, and works extremely hard. Um, so he's a very grounded individual, and, and those are all characteristics that, that we want to promote with our developmental athletes, our, our elite level developmental athletes, and our grassroots development. So um, I think he brings a lot to the program, and I'm very excited to, to start working with him on a daily basis. Well, as we head to break, here's a brand new feature from USA Wrestling called Take 10. Here's world team member Zach Ray with four-time NCAA champ Kyle Dake. You're watching Takedown, thanks to Nike Wrestling. What's your guilty pleasure? Ice cream. Hand to pause. Huh, interesting. What's your favorite video game and who, who would you challenge in it? Call of Duty Black Ops 1. And I would challenge Brad Pitt. Ooh, good. What's your favorite TV show? Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones, no question. For sure. What's your favorite home cooked meal? Probably, oh geez, my mom makes turkey dinner, mm. turkey, stuffing, gravy, mashed potatoes, Oreo cookie cake. So Thanksgiving? No, just that meal, I just told it, five, okay. five of those things. Okay, hmm, and uh, <laughs> if you could have a super, superpower, what would it be? Superpower or? Superpower. Teleport. 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 Okay, interesting. Nice. Anyway. Do you have any hidden talents? No. Good. No hidden talents. Nobody likes those. What actor would, would play you in a movie about your life? Ryan Gosling. I'm thinking Macaulay Culkin. <laughs> Macaulay Culkin. When um, I was younger, Macaulay Culkin. Now, <laughs> Ryan Gosling. Ryan Gosling's good too. What's, what's your middle name? Douglas. Douglas? It's my dad's name. Thanks for making fun of it. Um, who's your celebrity crush? 
Oh gosh, Ryan Gosling. <laughs> Good boy. Yeah. Uh, if you could switch places with anybody for a day, who would it be? Uh, dead or alive? Sure. Or just alive? Whatever. Nikolai Tesla. Okay. Last one we got. If you could read one person's mind, who would it be? Putin. Mm. I want to see what those Russians are doing. Mm. I think Putin's very straightforward. I don't think there'd be I much think behind some, it. There's some that we don't know about. Oh, yeah. That's a wrap. More POTUS. Yellow Blue wants to show you global energy demands are expanding at an alarming rate. Power grids in the U.S. are aging while coal plants continue to close at record rates. Utility rates are at an all-time high and there's no end in sight. If this concerns you, call Yellow Blue, delivering products and services that are not only green but cost-effective. You can be independent, safe, and secure. We'll show you how at yellowbluetech.com. In this town, there's only one pizza joint that has your best interests in mind. They make every single pie from scratch. The freshest ingredients, 100% real mozzarella. Oh, and if your engine's running a quart low, well, they can take care of that too. Casey's, famous for pizza. Right now, get free breadsticks with the purchase of any large made from scratch pizza. The war raged for generations. No amount of bravery and conviction could end the infected, unyielding rage. And with every battle, the evil grew, changed, evolved. The warriors needed nothing short of a miracle to stop the infection. And a miracle they received. Your body is at war against skin infections and diseases each time you step onto the mat. Protect yourself against the invasion. Defend so defend what you have built. All right, welcome back to Takedown. We're joined today by a very special guest and a great friend of the show. Live from Lawrenceville, New Jersey, is writer head coach Gary Taylor. Coach, how are you? Good morning, Scott. I'm fine, thank you. How are you doing? It was yesterday when I got the phone call from you telling me that you had decided to retire at the end of the season this year. Correct. What does that, uh, I mean, I know what you've done because I, I guess I've been a little intimate with you and, and John as you've been grooming him, teaching him to be the best he could possibly be, to fill those shoes, but this is almost a perfect storm. It seems to be happening exactly the way both the university want it and you and John want it. Yes. Uh, one of the main things uh, that um, has taken place over the last several years is, is the preparation for this day uh, to get here. Uh, John and I have been, you know, talking about and strategizing and so on and so forth. And um, our director of athletics, Don Harnum, uh, was completely on board. It was just a matter of time as to when I would make that decision. Um, and one of the things that was very, very important to me because this, this has been, um, you know, my passion for 39 years is Ryder University. And um, when I decided that I it was coming to a point where I would be retiring, it was just really, really important that the uh, program uh, be in a good state uh, when that happened, and uh, you know we've uh, we've all been working hard, and and the coaching staff here with uh, John Hanji, who was an All American for me, Nick Bedleone, who's a two time All American for Kent State, and Jason Nace is our volunteer and club coach, who was an All American for me, and uh, a lot of hard work, and uh, we've been very fortunate. Uh, to get some some key recruits in here in recent years. Uh, and with winning the EWL last year, having uh, an, another All-American in back-to-back -back years, um, I just felt that this was the right time. And it also keeps uh, returning All-American uh, B.J. Clagan and Chad uh, Walsh in, uh, 
in the following year. So in that following year, and John has already made the decision uh, that uh, Nick Bedleone, and that, again, that was part of our plan, would move up to his head assistant. And uh, Nick's just done an outstanding job here uh, as well. I know that you, you've you known John for some time, and uh, to know John is to like him. He's just a great guy and a great coach. And I've been saying you know, for years now that I felt that I had the best of associate head coach in the country are certainly one of the very best. Uh, there are some good ones out there, but I always felt that John was one of the very best in the nation. And uh, John and I, in strategizing, uh, Nick Bedleone was real key to the program, uh, has a bright future in coaching, and this is what he wants to do. So, um, you know, everything has just come together at the right time. And it allowed me to step down at a time where they still have two returning All-Americans and get off to a great start themselves. Gary, you've given so much to the sport. Uh, the end result generally is judged with victories. You have 429 victories coming into this season. That's fourth all-time at Division One, and first among active Division One wrestling coaches. Uh, 11 victories just shy of third place, by the way, so I have a belief that perhaps you will move in to third place uh, at the conclusion of this year. That has not always been a goal for you, has it? No, I, I, I can't say that that was, uh, was ever uh, the goal. Uh, when I first got uh, to Ryder, um, I was asked in a press conference that amounted to about seven people, I think, and that and, and only two of them were press. Uh, um, the only goal that I ever uh, set was uh, they asked, you know, what do you want to see happen at Ryder when I was announced a head coach? And I just said, I, I you know, I want to see both Eastern and uh, national rec recognition brought to Ryder University. And you could have, you know, you could have heard a pin drop at that moment. Uh, it was a pretty bold statement because none of that had ever happened uh, before. But to me, I, you know, uh, it, it wasn't even a goal. I just, I knew it was going to happen um, with a lot of hard work and a lot of people praying behind me and, and, and so on that uh, I just felt that was going to happen and it did happen. Prior to your arrival, Ryder had never had a nationally ranked wrestler, never had a nationally ranked team, or an All-American. Uh, the, the finish over the last 10 and even 15 years has been exceptional. Yeah, this year Chad became our 15th All-American, and, and we're very proud of, of uh, his accomplishment. And um, he did that in his sophomore year, and B.J. Clagan the year before was the first freshman All-American that we've ever had. So there's been some nice breakthroughs, and, and you know, a, a ton of uh, that credit goes to uh, John, uh, Nick, and Jay, um, you know, just working really hard, you know, with, with the kids uh, in the program and pushing at them and wrestling with them and, and, uh, and so on. So, uh, you know, as again... It's a good, uh, it's a good time uh, in the program. We have a lot of really good young kids. Kids are working hard, so you know I feel very good about the kids in this program and where the program's at right now. Gary Taylor's been our guest in the Nike hot seat. A gentle fire has been under the chair, but Coach Taylor has elected to retire at the end of the season. Gary, thank you so much for the time today, and congratulations. Thank you, Scott. Appreciate it. All right, special thanks to our friends at Track Wrestling, the University of Iowa, Virginia Tech, Penn State, and, of course, USA Wrestling. Join me later this week as Tony Hager and I take a look back at the first week of college wrestling on Global Wrestling News. And join us Saturday mornings for Takedown Radio. I'm off to New York for the Bill Farrell. For all of us at Takedown, I'm Scott Casper. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again real soon.